company. The man who put it on the pole will finish the race in the 24 hours. So he will go these final two hours in this 911. They're trying to catch that number 24 BMW. The battle in GTLM has been outstanding for hours. It should come down to the final two hours here as Tandy hops behind the wheel of the 911. And neither Tandy or Bamber are afraid to rub a little bit. In fact, we saw more than just rubbing last year. We saw some very aggressive, hard contacts. Oh, so Porsche drivers will do anything That's to get good. to the checkered flag. Not just a sprint race. What will they do to win the Rolex 24? We well, got John Edwards behind the wheel right now. The 24 that BMW has been putting together great laps, lap after lap after lap, and they've been able to gap now the Porsches, which we hadn't seen this entire race. It had been within tenths of seconds. Well, he's hitting the, hitting the pit lane right now, so he's had the straight line speed. He's lacked a little bit on the brakes and in the infield to the Porsche, but here comes the, the BMW, Kelly. Yeah, and what a job by John Edwards to get this Team RLL BMW the lead. Now, they had been running third as a team, and it was actually on a pit stop under caution when the pit crew helped them jump one of those 911 Porsches. They made the driver change at that point, putting John Edwards behind the wheel, and he got the team the lead, and it's really been a dogfight, and you see another driver change happening right now. That is Jesse Chrome taking over the wheel, presumably to finish out this race he also had a mega stint uh, in the late night hours which really helped him put the pressure on those 911 porsches who qualified one two and certainly seemed to have the speed in this gtlm class but bmw team rll looking for back-to-back -back rolex 24 and daytona victories last year it was car number 25 these drivers in the 24 team looking for their watch this time around We'll see where this all cycles out. He came out in with a pretty good lead over Bamber, so we'll see where these guys cycle out as we go back to the Corvette. There's the Porsche right there in GTLM. It's the 911, and right now Nick Tanny being scored in the third position. Bamber, Earl Bamber in the 912, is running second to. Now we saw Jesse Crone. Climb behind the wheel of the 24. Race leader, cold tires. Cold tires on track. This car's not getting up to speed super fast. That Porsche is not too far behind. There he is right there coming around. You'll see there's a little bit of black on the nose. No damage. He's lost some wrap material up front. The sister car has lost wrap material, but the chase now is on. It's going to take about a lap to get these Michelins up to prime operation, but a little bit of understeer working the tire a little bit, trying to get it up there. Remember, we've got sunshine on the racetrack, so better track temperature. Going to come up a little bit quicker. I love that you said that, sunshine on the racetrack. Our stint is coming to an end, so Ryan Till, Paul Tracy, uh, we will be wrapping up, handing it off to Lee Diffie. They're going to take it to final stint. Calvin Fish will be up here uh, taking it all the way to the checkered flag a lot different from a year ago guys in my first run at the rolex 24 where most of it was rain filled now we're talking about a record of pace that could be broken uh, it was set back in 2018 808 laps already 760 laps have been completed still two hours to go in this race there's been no breaks in the action for 23 22 hours now so it's been hard dog fight racing and now that Porsche is right there he's only 10 car lengths back from that BMW so look he's there now so we are going to have the next two hours these guys are going to be going at it I don't remember a Rolex 24 recently that's been this competitive through all the different classes and we've said it repeatedly you, you can look at the leaderboard you don't really know if it was from right now or from 12 hours ago because it's the same competitors and they're just that close together speaking of just that close together. Look at the 912. Earl Bamber has closed in on Jesse Crone. Oh, big on the brakes right there. The 912 is very good in the infield. It looks like it's he's going to make a move. He's going to have to try to go around the outside. Crone is going to protect the inside going down in here. But that look at the braking capability of that porsche on the on the bmw in the infield and now as we get it he's going to come around the outside now the there's going to be a drag race on the banking he's got to hang tough on the outside and use that bmw power 
preferred line as they go through six and back out onto the high banks here at Daytona. A new leader in GTLM. It's been incredible for 22 hours and it's heating up again. But look at the power of the BMW. He's in the draft. He's starting right now, starting to suck up a little bit. As he comes down, He's. I don't think he's going to be close enough to make a move in the bus stop. But if we see if he gets a good run through the bus stop, that thing's got speed. The 912 blocks a little bit, does a little bit of the Pruitt fade. As they come through the chicane, he's got to stay close and use the draft and the power to get by the start-finish line. Porsches have been incredible in the infield, in the infield portion of this race. The BMWs, they have been great on the straight-in speed. That's where they have been able to pull away. But now we see the Porsche in front as they get ready to come into the infield here, Marty. Under two hours, and if there's been one constant in this 24-hour race, it has been Earl Bammer behind the wheel of that 912. He's been outstanding today, Rick. Every time he's gotten in the in, behind the wheel of the car, he's taken the lead, he's gained spots, and it's been consistent, and he does it once Whoa. again. Can he keep the BMW behind him? As you mentioned, this is where Porsche is good, in the international horseshoe, but when it comes to the straights, that BMW is strong. Well, he just ran super wide. The BMW has been closer than it's ever been in the infield so he made a little mistake and missed the apex. But I got a feeling that these Porsches might have been just running to a pace and looks like the straightaway speed has gotten better. Have they turned this thing up and made some more power for the final two hours? That's a really good question. I, I think Jesse Crow made a little bit of a mistake in six the last time he tried to close the door and perhaps he just said, said go ahead and try the undercut, but instead he got held up, wasn't able to take advantage of the straight line speed of the BMW, but I agree with you, Paul. We're seeing speed right now out of the Porsche on the straights that I don't think we've seen. And the Bamber Crone battle continues. And what a battle it has been. And it will go on for another hour and 56 minutes from here at Daytona. On the other side of the break, Lee Diffie, Calvin Fish, back with you to call the ending. Right now, still waiting on fuel, and now he's away. A little bit of smoke coming out from the brake ducks on that car. As these two cars here, the BMW and the Porsche, have been battling for nine hours. It was interesting on that stop for the six, it looked like they were putting what we call bear bond, which is a large, sticky, tiny big, piece big, of duct tape yeah, big on the right side of it. So I don't know if there was a problem there, Kevin. So the 81, the LMP2 leader for Dragon Street, who won this race last year in class, with an entirely different set of drivers is in. No Michelin tire change this time, so it's a double stint. Ben Hanley, who's driven back to the lead, stays in the car. The 52, Simon Trummer staying in, running second. They just pitted just a moment ago, so we'll see how this cycles back. Trummer's gonna be a little closer in the gap, and he, did he stall it? He's trying to keep going, he's gonna keep going, he's gonna be able to get back out. So impressed with what Elton Julian has built over the years as far as the team goes running sports cars in Europe, running them here, running the IndyCar now. And Elton Julian, if you don't know that name, just look it up, look at Driver Database or any of the other driver stats uh, pages and you'll see what kind of a race car driver he was. He was exceptional back in the day and actually had a shot at Formula One, had a ride lined up and then the funding fell through and that kind of ended his driving career, but he was that good. He's brought that same kind of passion and determination to being a team owner, and he's done exceptional, exceptional things. Yeah, you're talking about the team principal for Dragon Speed, that 81 LMP2 car that currently is leading in class. We're riding along with the 912, currently running in the second spot in class, uh, in GTLM. And we laughed because we saw BMW go by, and it's just been back and forth. It's been those two, uh, that 24 and the 912 or the 911. I mean, they've both been right there, but they have been battling for the lead almost the entire nine hours of this race. Hey, race. Rick, it's been a seesaw yes. battle. I actually got a question for the guys up there, Brian and PT. So I was watching that battle, and I saw Farfus starting to catch Jaminé in the 912, and he actually started to catch he actually started to flash his lights, even though there was no traffic. And I know, I have never raced in a car that has the ability to flash lights, but I don't know. If I was leading and someone was racing me for position and started flashing their lights at me, that would make me very angry. 
or would it confuse you? I mean, I because you guys, do get the lights flashed are at you. So, they're so used to it now that you don't even really pay attention to it at all. But this battle has gone on from the drop of the green flag. It's been a seesaw back and forth. And what we've seen is this BMW's got big straightaway speed, and the Porsche is just monster on the brakes and through the infield. So this right here, you see the BMW just kind of stretches out on it. And then when we get back to turn one in the brake zone, that Porsche will be right there and on the back of that car through the infield. That was a good call to hold off on that peak inside by the prototype as they get to the bus stop. I, I understand prototypes flashing the lights at GT cars saying, hey, I'm back here, I'm coming. I'm going to look at going inside in this brake zone. I, I just kind of have to chuckle and roll my eyes a little bit. When you've got drivers, the level of the GTLM drivers flashing lights at each other, it's like, guys, you're, you're so far past that. That's 